أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Technology is the new pen and paper as it allows us to better communicate with one another. The involvement of digital platforms, the virtual world, augmented reality, online libraries and webinars are the new chalk and board of our education system, while search engines have become the new library. And as we find ourselves treading on this path of digital innovation, almost on a daily basis in our lives, Muslim Kids TV thought it beneficial to see how our global pioneers in education and Islamic learning take the lead. We endeavor to see how the Islamic schools are making things click in the education industry digitally. And for this, we have amidst us the respected name in the field of education in Malaysia and globally, Mrs. Azman from the Greenview Islamic International School, Malaysia. She is the school principal of this wonderful school, and she has secured proficiency in various disciplines, only to name a few, such as the Professional Diploma in Special Education by the Institute of Professional Development Open University. She has an advanced diploma for a course of studies in special education by the College of Allied Educators. She also has a diploma for a course of studies in learning disorders management and child psychology. She has taught Arabic composition and Arabic comprehension to students aged 10 to 16. And for nine years, she has conducted a beginner's class and an intermediate class in Islam for converts to Islam and non-Muslims. She is the author of various publications published by the Z Majeed's book publishing. For example, she has to her credit the book, The Religion is Simple, fifth edition, and God and Man, Questions and Answers among so many others. The highlight of her career, of course, is compiling the syllabus for the pre-marriage course in 1986, which was made compulsory by the Singapore Sharia Court for all couples who registered for marriage. She was also selected by the Singapore government to train Muslim national school teachers to teach the subject called Islamic religious knowledge, which was included in the national school syllabus by the Singapore government in the year 1984 to 85. This is quite the resume. In fact, the resume that dreams are made of, of mashallah. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for having me on. Alhamdulillah. My name is Safa Ahmed, and let us begin our session for today by a hadith that we are constantly reminded of, where our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has stressed on the acquisition of beneficial knowledge for all. Can you share with us some prospects and challenges of Islamic education in Malaysia and globally? I think there is a growing demand for international education as we move towards a globalized world. Having a good command of English is a good asset as we have to move towards an international globalized community. We need to have universal values education to make us thinking and caring global citizens, which is our motto in Greenview Islamic International Schools. This is why Islamic education is very important because it provides universal moral values from which a globalized community can benefit and live in peace. Having said that, we want to acknowledge the fact that Islamic education is actually an international education. We cannot do without English, geography, history, sciences. We can't do without that. Um, simply because many ayahs in the Quran mention some scientific facts. And if we don't know them, we will not be able to appreciate the ayahs properly. Uh, even like in uh, geography also, the ayahs, they talk about how the mountains are like, you know, uh, uh, put right into the earth and what, what word is used for that in English, right? So we can't do without the so-called secular education when we are teaching Islam. So we have to give 
equal importance to what the West has separated from knowledge in Islam. Knowledge in Islam is everything of what Islam teaches with regards to Islamic subjects that students of Islam want to learn, as well as what the secular world, so-called secular world is teaching. That is knowledge in Islam. We cannot deny that, can we? So we, we in Greenview, we try to achieve 100% of so-called secular education as well as 100% of Islamic education. See, during the time of Rasulullah there was no distinction between secular and Islam. I think everybody knows that here, right? So the, the, the separation came about, I think, recently, perhaps in the past 100, 150 years, they decided to separate secular education and Islamic education, therefore giving the inference that Islamic education has got nothing to do with secular education, which is totally wrong, Islamically. And I think many Islamic schools around the world do realize that they have incorporated secular education, so-called secular education, into their, our Islamic curriculum. Alhamdulillah, that is absolutely right. Universal education is secular and has to be promoted as such. Islamic education cannot be segregated, which will only call for the demotivation of students. So we have to move forward with Islamic education in a global perspective. Alhamdulillah. When the novel coronavirus struck, it forced societal changes across the globe. How would you best describe the challenges that you faced as educators uh, and how that helped shape your vision of what success would look like for Greenview International? Talking about challenges, during a UNESCO meeting which we attended, we identified some problems faced by all Islamic schools worldwide. Um, one, um, one of the uh, main uh, re uh, reasons I mean, one of the main problems was poor quality teachers. Another one that we identified was a lack of proper curriculum. The other one was high absenteeism among the students and truancy. Another problem that was identified was the use of physical abuse by teachers. And uh, another problem that uh, was discussed was bullying among the students. So therefore, in order to improve quality of Islamic education, we have to overcome these problems, starting uh, with hiring quality teachers who deserve a good pay. And um, on top of that, having a good curriculum, such as that of the Cambridge curriculum for the academics. We want a curriculum that focuses on critical thinking and understanding as the basis for our good curriculum. And this is in line with how Allah teaches us Islam in the Quran. How Allah teaches us Quran, uh, Islam in the Quran, He tells us to think, He tells us to ponder. Most of the ayahs in the Quran will, uh, will, will end with you know, Do you not then reason? Do you not then think? You know? So the thinking facility is just about the only thing that difference, differentiates us human beings from the animals. And uh, <clears throat> that is what we call it reason, isn't it? Huh? Reason is the only one that differentiates us from the animals. So we have to make full use of our reasoning capability, which will incorporate critical thinking. You know, when we are teaching Islam, I mean, science is right. They use full use of the criti uh, critical thinking facilities. And um, when we train teachers with uh, Islamic knowledge, you know, they are teaching secular uh, academics, you know. And uh, when we train them with Islamic knowledge, we find that the science teachers, they score the most on uh, the exams that we give because the way they teach Islam is based on critical, uh, I mean, the way they teach their sciences is based on critical thinking uh, for, uh, capabilities, right? So in the same way, when we are teaching Islam, we want to do that as well. We want to ask, we want to get the children to ask why, how, 
you know, we want to focus on that. Because when they know the why, that means they are using their reasoning. And once their reason is in line with their understanding, then their Iman becomes stronger, you know, and they are much more happier becoming Muslims as Muslims. Most of the Islamic rules and regulations, they are in line with our critical thinking facilities. They're in line with reason, right down to like even issues like inheritance issues, you know, why the females are getting a lot, uh, uh, half of what the males are getting, that is in line with our reasoning facilities. And uh, uh, right down to polygamy, although most women don't like it, but the fact is, you know, the benefit is there for the society as a whole. So we need to focus on that when we are teaching Islam. Therefore, in order to improve quality Islamic education, we have to overcome these problems, starting with hiring quality teachers who deserve a good pay, having a good curriculum, and uh, making sure that our teaching focuses on critical thinking and understanding. The amalgamation of critical thinking with the perspective of Islamic education is the way to move forward, as you have rightly pointed out the perks and the benefits of doing so. Alhamdulillah. Uh, when we think of imparting uh, beneficial knowledge to our students, technology is of course making things easier than ever for students to learn online. So has Green International made a jump into digital learning? And if it hasn't, then what are the challenges that you may face in digital learning? And how are you going to successfully overcome these challenges? Okay, technology makes it easy, easier for students to learn online. We made a jump into digital learning, as you pointed out. I must say that one of the benefits of the pandemic is that it has forced schools like ours to do online learning. Initially, we did not even know what Zoom was, you know, but because the pandemic occurred and everything had to go online, we found out all the different um, platforms that we had to use and Greenview and well, um, Greenview Islamic Schools managed to to actually um, implement online education almost immediately and very successfully the next day itself so but however online learning cannot be a substitute for physical schooling physical classes, especially for the primary students and the secondary students. Both parents and students, they prefer physical classes, especially for the young ones, right? Online classes, I would say, are a little bit more suitable for higher education, colleges, universities. But our experience on conducting online education has given us an insight into the Google Classrooms, and all the tools that we had uh, faithfully ignored all these years. So now we have access to them. And uh, I think this, the teachers, although now physical classes are ongoing, the teachers are still using those tools to teach the students. So this one thing good came out of it, the pandemic. Alhamdulillah for that. Uh, your views on digital learning being a mode of instruction in this modern day world is uh, enlightening, alhamdulillah. Uh, with this, we are going to take a short break, after which we will resume this engaged okay. conversation with you, ma'am, inshallah. All right. Okay, inshallah. Unlock the love of Islam in your children and open their imagination and hearts. Muslim Kids TV brings together thousands of the best animations, videos, games, ebooks, and Islamic resources for you and your family. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. Let's go! I am a Muslim. Look at me. I am kind Enjoy the best Islamic children's animations and videos exclusively on www.muslimkids.tv. I am a Muslim, look at me. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. Stimulate your child's learning with the largest collection of Islamic themed video games. Ramadan 
has come and gone. Eid has done upon us. Thank you, Allah, for the spare. Thousands of ebooks celebrating the Islamic history, culture, and values. Thank you, Allah, for this blessed day. Eid Sa'id, Yomun Farhan. Unleash your child's creativity through endless hours of to do it yourself activities. Keep the Quran close to their hearts with our special Quran app. Muslim Kids TV is developed by leading educators and supervised by a community of religious scholars from around the world. Can you think of anything neater than parties in the streets? Hugging friends and so much to eat. The food's much sweeter now that Ram does complete it. Loved by families, educators, and especially children. Come celebrate it with me. It's time to have a big party. We're nice, close, and eat some. Muslim Kids TV is available where you want it and when. Enjoyed on mobile, web, and on leading smart TV brands. Your whole family can watch anytime, anywhere. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. Muslim Kids TV, building a better Muslim generation. Speaking about the unpleasant aspect of digital technology, kids nowadays, of course, have more challenges than before. And they can be easily influenced by external things available online as soon as they leave school. So how can educators such as you make sure that kids are not influenced by the ill effects of digital technology? This is a serious problem. Cyberbullying, fake news can influence students very badly. We have uh, to con constantly monitor students' activities online. We have told our parents that um, to, do, to help the students help themselves, three things they have to do. Number one is to switch off the Wi-Fi at 9.30. And number two, I told, uh, we told the parents uh, um, to ask the students to hand over the gadgets to them at 9.30. Third thing we told our parents is to put their, their laptops or desk, desktops in the dining hall or in the living room for them to do their projects and all that so that can be monitored. So this is how we can help them help themselves. Otherwise, they'll be, they'll be on the WhatsApp and all these social media until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. They don't sleep, you know, and come back to school and they're sleepy, grumpy, unable to learn. So we have told them that. We have to also warn our students of the dangers that exist in the internet. We have to acknowledge that the internet does provide wonderful opportunities for learning. Therefore, we need to guide the students to use the internet wisely and how to distinguish between true information and false information. This is where our critical thinking skills become important again in learning. Basically, that's what we do to avoid cyberbullying. We do mention, we do talk to them about cyberbullying and uh, how to regard cyber cyberbullying. We do not want to be influenced by anybody's opinion of us. We want to be only influenced by Allah's opinion of us and our own opinion of, our, of ourselves. That's what we want to be influenced by. We have to be secure with our own value system. So we do not allow anybody to disturb our value system. So we have been constantly reminding them. But you know, teenagers being teenagers, they do get upset. The teenage situation is a catch-22 situation. And Allah, I pray to Allah that things are made easy for them, as well as us who are their guardians, who overlook their activities. As in the end, we all will be answerable to them. So may Allah ease our affairs. I mean. Uh, 
Um, Every day is what you make of it. You don't just wish for it. We work towards it. So who better than yourself, Mrs. Azman, to help us draw motivation with your professional and personal success stories so that we can celebrate your win globally. Can you let us in on a few success stories that help shape the education system in Malaysia and maybe even globally? In Greenview Islamic schools, we do not choose our students. We don't take the top achievers only into our, our school. We take all of them, whether they have been, uh, they are underachievers, top achievers, they have special needs. We do take the special needs as well. But however, with regards to the special needs, the SEND children, we take in only those with dyslexia, you know, or those with uh, ADHD. If it's ADHD inattention or ADHD, uh, I forgot the term, but there's one ADHD where they do things without realizing it. I, I can't remember. We don't take that because some ADHD children, they will push, pull, box, punch, you know, we don't take them, right? Because it, it disturbs the other children. But uh, for our students, we do take ADHD inattention. We take, we allow them to move around the class and uh, walk around the class because they cannot keep still, right? Uh, uh, but they are listening and when we ask the questions, they are answering, they're the first to answer. So we do give support that way. We do inclusive education with them. Dyslexic children do very well in our schools because uh, um, all our classes are multimedia classes. We have uh, the TV and the whatnot, you know, they use PowerPoint videos, etc., and all that to teach them. So it, benefits them and they do work do well in our schools, right? But um, with positive reinforcement learning and non-violent communication, we have helped students achieve beyond their imagination. For example, this year's IGCSE students, they achieved 128 A stars and A's this year. Many were underachievers, but our teachers managed to inspire them to become great A exam achievers, alhamdulillah. Right, so basically it's all about positive reinforcement learning. We do have to continue to achieve what we have uh, so far achieved. We should not be um, comfortable, we should not be satisfied, we should not be contented with, with what we have achieved. The striving has to continue. We cannot afford to be laid back, we cannot afford to be complacent. We need to be determined to continue to achieve for the students. We have to be determined to continue to improve our services for the Ummah. Inshallah, we can do it. All our global educators, they can do it. We have to establish and strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything else will come in place. And that is the crux of every, every foundation that we lay in our lives. As we come to the final league of our conversation, setting an example henceforth, what can fellow educators the world over learn from you, Mrs. Azman? I think all schools worldwide, Islamic schools, strive for the same goals, to achieve, to give quality education to their students. We have to be determined to improve and upgrade our methods of teaching, our facilities to help students fulfill their potential. Teachers' training is very important. We need to train them, to remind them, to get their feedback, to have sharing sessions on how they achieved success with their students and how they overcame certain challenges that they, they met, uh, they saw with their children. So if with this continued training of teachers, we can achieve as Islamic schools. Teachers are the crux of our success. They have, we, we, we place a lot of importance in getting in teachers on board. We, sometimes we interview maybe perhaps about 60, 50 to 60 teachers before we choose even one, right? Because it's not only about the education they have, but it's about the passion they have for teaching. It's about the compassion they have for the students. It's about the empathy that they, be, they have for the students. So most of our teachers in our schools are very caring, very kind, very compassionate, very concerned about each and every child, which is why I think um, Greenview Islamic School has it easy when it comes to teaching and learning, you know, with uh, regards to achieving 
um, good grades for our students. That is wonderful. To Let's hear. hope the same for everybody around the world. Absolutely. Alhamdulillah. So to change not only what we learn, but also how we learn, that is the need of the R. And that is what we have learned from you, Mrs. Aswan. It's been an absolute honor being on this side and hear you share your views and opinions of what digitalized Islamic oh, education can so hold for our children. Uh, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. The pleasure has been entirely ours. Jazakallah khair and kaseer and kaseer for your time and effort. And with this, we come to the end of an insightful meeting. Subhana rabbik rabbil aizzati amma yasfoon wa salam al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam. Thank you very much for having me on board.